Hey everyone, welcome to My Opium Movies. This week we interrupt our werewolf October in an effort to keep up with the team. We're doing a DC movie called Green Lantern, the Ryan Reynolds movie. And we chose this, of course, because there is Black Adam coming out, a movie where there's all sorts of news coming out and yada yada yada. But also because Ryan Reynolds and uh, Hugh Jackman have announced that Deadpool 3 is not only coming, but it's going to star Wolverine as well. So... I just wanted to toss this all together and let you, uh, you know, have a chance to have a break in the Halloween fun. But don't worry, we will still do four episodes on films. Thanks for all you do. Thanks for listening. And thanks for supporting us. Please share us however you share us. And thanks. Welcome to Myopia Movies. Uh, this week... We enter a fourth entry into a great director's filmography. After doing Goldeneye, Casino Royale, and The Mask of Zorro, Martin Campbell decided to direct a DC movie called The Green Lantern. In honor of the release of Black Adam and the fact that Ryan Reynolds has been filling my Twitter feed with him and huge Jackman. Mm, so jacked. So jacked. You we, old though, man. Uh, still, he's on my. He's, on, he's number three for me. I, I mean, first of all, it's Hugh Jackman. I'm fine. I'm fine with either of him. Him and Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds owns a soccer team. We're all fine. We're all fine here. Welcome to Mexico. We're talking 2011's Green Lantern. I'm host Nick Kaufman and a riffer on the now returned comedy team of Cinecom. Yep, yes. And on panel, we've got part of that comedy team. I'm Candace. Uh, Nord Chernet, playing with ice right now. And I'm Charlie Rose. Hello, this is Daniel, contributor to popdose.com. And uh, I really don't have a joke here. Uh, Green Lantern's Light. Uh, so, uh, this is one of those that just refuses to get flushed, so we decided to do it. Um, Green Lantern is, I don't know, for those of you who really like DC Comics, uh, the first Wonder Woman in the 70s was a great show. And then we have a the first Wonder Woman movie is a very good movie. The second one thought it was great, but no. fine. Uh, we've got Batman. We've got Superman. They finally branch out into Green Lantern, and we get a fart cloud for 75 minutes. Oh, boy. This, this was an ugly, ugly movie. This was if, bad. If you liked Green Lantern, you were you were a, a sad, fat kid on Christmas. Now, I don't know to tell you. The, the agreement that was made prior, but I had planned to stick to it. And Tom mentioned uh, CGI. I take a drink. So, uh, so that means you're already dead. So in the first four have, minutes, you have nothing but drinking. Yeah, 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 so yeah. we've already got poison control on speed dial here. Oh, God. I mean, I'll tell you what. I'm ready the, to save your life. The first really? four minutes of this, I played Quake 3. It was better than this a decade earlier. The, the, like, it's awful. And when they show what, uh, I mean, it's supposed to be one of the Guardians that turns into... Parallax, it's just a wall from Doom 3. It's its the worst thing I've ever seen. And even Ryan Reynolds has the CGI mask on because I guess there was no hope. There was no face paint left in Hollywood for all the strippers in cup. I don't i don't know what to tell you. How you doing there, Charlie Rose? I'm just hurting. I really am. Why? I, so here's the thing. What's up? Green Lantern. Green Lantern, it's, it's a great DC property. It really is. I mean, they've got some phenomenal stories. I mean, we were talking earlier, Nick, about uh, Blackest Night. Right. Oh, phenomenal. If, if you don't know anything about Green Lantern, mm. it's not... It's a little bit hard to get into, but it's by far the greatest graphic novel set that they give Green Lantern in this era. It's yeah. great. So, I guess, so I started going to DC, like, at least the animated one when they did the Justice League come out in the early 2000s. Right. Um... <coughs> Super Friends, okay, whatever. Green Lantern at that time, at least with that Justice League, was uh, John Stewart. Yeah. Uh, not uh, Howard yes. Gordon. Yes. Which to me, I was just like, okay, cool, this is the one they grew up with. But uh, I don't know, then you put Rock. I mean, I'm not saying Rock Mills is a really pretty guy. I'm not going to, like, there's no single doubt about it, but I felt like this movie was just a movie just because, like, coming back from, like, Blade Trinity, I think there was all these failed attempts to make him, like, a superhero. And then, because uh, I think, when did uh, X-Men Origins came out? So that was before this movie. 
2009. I think it was the same. Uh, the Wolverine. 2009. The same time. So, yeah. So, so Trinity, uh, Blake Trinity film. Yep. Uh, X Men Origin film with uh, him uh, as a proto Deadpool. Pro Deadpool shoving in my mouth, and then Green Lantern. So there's been all these failed attempts to make Ryan Reynolds an actual new hunk superhero. Uh, and just before someone tweets at me because who could care? Yeah. It's X Men Origins Wolverine that he is, uh, where he plays he plays Deadpool. Which, by the by, if you watch the first and second Deadpool movie, he plays with the action figure yeah. himself. Which Ryan Reynolds can tell a joke, and unfortunately here they don't let him do it very much. He tries. No, he, he tries. tries. He tries. Can you imagine trying to be charming without with charming people around you? Like it's just like Blake Lively, she's dead. Like she's dead air. Uh, Skarsgård, he's dead air. Uh, the only good thing to come out of this movie is the relationship between Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively. Because that is that is, like, that is, that is real world. Beauty right it there. It led to some great tweets. <laughs> great tweets. It did. Also, this is the first time anyone saw Taika Waititi on screen in the big world. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very sad. unrecognizable. I did not. Black hair Taika. I was scary. like, wait, is that? <gasps> well, Taika and Tamara Waititi. Morrison is in this, yeah. who is Boba yeah. Fett. Who's Boba Fett. Mm. And uh, we have oh. Dr. Waller, who's the one who puts together a suicide squad every time a bad sequel needs to come out. Except it's not, um, uh... Uh, it's Angel Bassett I, I when yeah. I rewatched this, I was just like, oh no, I like uh, uh, what's her name? You Viola like Davis, Davis better? Viola yeah, Davis way better. As I mean, as they're as both as queens, as but Davis is a top I, top tier royalty. You have that? I don't give a fuck about. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah, she's she really. Is. Well, this we also, of course is in Black Panther. Have we right. also already forgotten that Mr. Andy Dufresne himself, Tim Robbins, gets burned alive in this movie? Well, I mean, Tim Robbins is in his senator, CEO, or president phase here, and it's fine. It and really it's fine. Weird. It's perfectly it fine. Really I, I can't picture Tim Robbins playing a member of Congress without him being in a wheelchair, even though he doesn't need to be. I'm not a sport, man. Um, so... I mean, just just very quickly, uh, I mean, if I needed to do a plot synopsis, I should twist my arm. I do never it. get to do these, I'm having fun. Do I'm it. I'm just do happy. It. So, uh, turns out, after six minutes of CGI, the greatest Green Lantern of all time, Evan Sur, uh, fucks uh, with the wrong guy, and Parallax, who had been previously locked up inside of a planet, has escaped. He kills Evan Sur, sends him to Earth, and... Looking for a new lantern, we he stumbles across uh, Ryan Reynolds playing Hal Jordan, who is the second Green Lantern in the comics, but we won't get there now. It turns out that Ryan Reynolds, Hal Jordan, is working for Ferris, uh, Ferris, Air, uh, Ferris Industries, is a standard bearer in the DC Universe, uh, and he is a test pilot, much like his father. This movie watched Top Gun, but it was muted at a bar, so it got most of the yeah. The sound was off, but I got the gist of it. He was hot dogging, just like his dad was. I, I mean, actually, it might have been watching Hot Shots or Hot Shots Part Two. I, I, I can't be sure because it misses all the important points. Yeah. One way or another, after defeating two drones, which this movie predicted most of Obama's presidency, <laughs> um, oh, uh, shots fired. Well, right, it blew up the drones. Well, I mean, so although, although how could it have predicted most of Obama's presidency when we were? Three years into it at this point, because uh, that asshole from WikiLeaks hadn't leaked stuff yet. Ah. That came out the next year. Oh. Anyway, so uh, he oh. blows up the drones, but blows up the plane in the process. And while he is kind of licking his wounds, Ibn Sur's ring finds him, and he becomes the new Green Lantern, which allows him to beat up a bunch of rednecks. Before it turns out that Sinestro. With a name like Sinestro, might in fact be evil. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, sends him on his way to fight Parallax. The person that had the ring prior to Hal, uh, what was his name? Evan Sor. Evan Sor. I totally thought that was Kelsey Grammer. No. No, no, that no was, that's, that's Tamara Morris. That's Tamara Morris. If, if, if you look, if you didn't know who, who it was, yeah. it looks like an alien Kelsey Grammer. He does, I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, he doesn't sound so like him, but yeah. <laughs> I just wanted him to do a little Frasier to it. That's not good. But yeah, yeah. I shaved off my bullet. Thank you very much. Gotcha. Um, so, uh, how many of you have seen this before? I saw it in the theater. I, I, of course, saw it in the theater. I, 
I didn't see it in a theater. It I've was, seen bits and pieces of it on like TBS, and now I know why. I, rem- I remember the trailer was out in theaters, and uh, then I remember seeing the bad reviews, so I'm like, nah, so this is my first time ever seeing it. It was the next big uh, superhero movie. Was it 2011? So 2011. 2011. Yeah. So Captain America was coming out. So there was there was just you know uh, we about to uh, get the next new white uh, heroin uh, superhero movie before the Avengers and things like that. See, boy, for me, here's the thing. I saw Batman the Begins, and mm-hmm. then I saw The Dark Knight, and Dark Knight was Heath Ledger, and it was it was incredible, and then they. Man, that third one just never came out. And so DC had a new movie. It's going to be just as good. Right. And again, I wasn't the film dude I am today. Although the podcast started the next year. <laughs> this movie. So what you're saying this movie is the reason. But like, it's Martin Campbell. He made GoldenEye. It's my favorite Bond movie. And then Casino Royale. <laughs> it's your favorite Nintendo favorite 64, 64 I game. I, I also think they were trying to <laughs> put under uh, the Jonah Hex movie. Oh, oh, oh my stay, god. Stay the fuck because, dude. Thanos with a hole in his jaw. Because, yes. because that movie was so terrible they were like, alright, let's just forget yeah. that happened. Yeah. Because they were still trying Ooh, to I forgot they're, still about trying, they're still trying to marvel things, but they wanted to sweep that on the rough. Well, what? This is Green all Green <coughs> need his own movie. Who? Like, really. Just, no, he doesn't. I like, know. Actually, we were talking about movies versus yeah. TV shows. He'd be a good TV show. Partner. Yeah. Well, he no, was a TV absolutely. show at one point, wasn't it? Well, I mean, and back no. in the seventies, there was a TV show of this. I'm pretty sure. I and think you could TV show. TV show. TV show. <laughs> TV show. I mean, oh, hi, Mark. he was definitely <laughs> highlighted in Super Friends. Yeah, and but I think you're you're right. I mean, this is 2011. There are no streaming services at this point, and so, but had there been. I think this definitely would have been a Disney Plus kind of bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's Space Cops. There's Space Cops. We need you know Space what? Cops. Space Cops. <laughs> you know what? Do a Green Lantern movie shot like cops, <laughs> where it's just like a single camera that's shaking around. And you know about. who could direct it? Taika Waititi. Yes. Uh, no, 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 no. I would, I would like an actual we do with the lanterns? cop <laughs> procedural show. <laughs> Space Cop procedural. Well, Watterson shows up and is like, you've been, you've been arrested. Do you, well, you like Ryan Reynolds, with the station? We try to do a cop, space <laughs> cop-ish type. Are all, uh, are are all lanterns bad? Remember that? Oh my god. <laughs> all yellow lanterns. Yeah. Hashtag not all yellow lanterns. Uh, Here's the thing uh, for me about uh, these characters. Um, <laughs> who could care? Well, I mean, <laughs> to me, Green not Lantern I. and The Flash have always been supporting <laughs> characters in the comics. Uh, which they work well with the group and that dynamic there is fun, but as individuals they're just completely lost. And the reason why, and I think this movie shows it, they don't have any villains. I mean, uh, well, they they do, but they're not as memorable as like Lex Luthor or the Joker. Or I I will say the, the one thing I like about this movie. See, I think Lex Luthor's a they, cunt. They, so. The one thing I like about this movie is that they don't go into that superhero trope where, like in Iron Man. Iron Man versus Evil Iron Man. You know what I mean? So it was a different type. They could have easily gotten like the Evil Green Lantern. So, no. Yeah. Hit, no, no, no. Oh, Shut hold up. I mean, so, oh, no, so no, no, it's no. It's Nick, go. How is this an actual? Like, so, no. He was the, a cloud. No, Sinestro was not a cloud. Sinestro is the red dude who's evil. In the Green Lantern saga, right. Sinestro turns out he's fucking sinister. It's in the name. And so he feeds off of people's fear. Yes. So he does very terrorist kind of things. So it builds up his so, power. Okay. But you, you don't. Let, let me give you. Let me give you a quick five minute. But he's not Mister Sinister. Of of oh. Different property. Girl. Uh-huh. Don't talk about my favorite villain. Oh my god, that's one of my favorite villains. Right? Stop. Stop. Okay. Okay, we'll talk. All right. Anyway, that's going to be on our two desserts. So let's go back. So okay, in the green in the in the Green Lantern mythos. Right. Okay. They actually got some of the basics down. The Guardians were the ones who created it by harnessing the green energy. What they don't go into, which is discovered much later, is that there's actually all sorts of colors that run the emotional yeah. spectrum purple, and there's there's green, red, yes purple yellow. is is love yeah. uh green is will red is rage taco is tuesday yes <laughs> yellow is fear 
early on, yeah, yeah, but... Sinestro was a Green Lantern, but he was too obsessed with order and was ruling his world with fear, trying to impose order. Well, he was kicked out and then found the hijinks ensued, ended up with a yellow fear ring. So fear versus will were natural offsets. Yellow, green, yeah. dark natural side of the force. Offsets. Yeah, you know. Light side, dark side, the bendu in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> it just the thing is, if you had gotten rid of this whole script, it would have been too fast. But started with something that involved Sinestro fighting and then realizing he would be better, it fixes the whole movie. Yeah. For me, part of the problem is so much of it is CGI nonsense, who could care? <laughs> and Mark Strong as Sinestro looks the part, acts the part, he has that confidence, and he has that deep voice and strong jawline. Yeah. That makes you want to fight him. And Mark... Mustache. And Hal Jordan versus Sinestro, that's a fight you want to see. He is yes. their Joker. Yeah. And you get it, because they're different colors, which is all you need for villains. Well, right? Yeah, I was waiting all movie for there to be an actual real fight between them, not some bullshit training one. But no. Yeah. Well, would you have rather them... Anything! Any... Okay. The answer is yes for all the Well, no, guys. like, so sometimes in these movies, like, I hate... It's like the Batman of it. I don't want to see Martha and Bruce die over and over again. I, I don't. I don't. Just stick me in the middle. I know the Batman story. Sure. I know what happens. So, to me, the problem isn't the death of Ibn Sur other than it takes seven hours. Uh, that's fine, because this is the only time it's been on film. There's certain things I never need to see. Krypton blowing up... Some pearls falling because Martha gets it in the face, yeah. mm. and Uncle Ben dying. We've got it. It's on got film. It. Control it. safe. Nailed it. Yeah. This is the first time Green Lantern has been put to celluloid. It's not great, but that happens. The rest of the movie after that, though, needs to be less CGI nonsense. True. I would guess the original bit of this didn't have Anthony Hopkins's intro. And that was all oh, yeah. cards from people who were like, I don't know what's happening. But that's because they did the, the tests well, at like I mean, Disney World and no one knew who it was. The Green Lantern Corps could have been amazing. Well, or a TV show. Exactly, now. exactly. If they just did a Green... Yeah, no. I'd rather just focus Well, on and, and here's the thing. It's Hal Jordan's origin story is like a paragraph of information. I, <laughs> Once you set up the concept of the Green Lantern Corps, right. which they did in the, the first 30 seconds of the movie... Yeah. Then all you need to know is it's going to search out the person with the highest will and the greatest ability to overcome fear. And oh, look, he just happens to be that person at that time in that sector. Yeah. That's it. That's his origin. Literally, Boom, done. The, 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 the line before he gets sucked up by this green orb, when he's what, with his nephew? Yeah. He's like, did you ever get scared? He's like, it's not my job to get scared. And then it just, I guess that's like the camp or something. But no, I just. I, I didn't want to see his dad blow up. Uh, yeah, that was, that was just that, that just, was that too just, much. That no, was gratuitous. They could, have, they could have gotten that at the end. It was a too long dream sequence or whatever. Well, and you raise a good point. They spent too much time worrying about how he's going to prove himself in overcoming fear. Yeah. No, from day one, Hal Jordan has always been just a very driven, will-focused daredevil who gets shit done. Yeah. I'd much rather see Tom Cruise as a Hal Jordan. Tom, you see Tom Cruise in everything, don't you? I don't you? know. The Scientology no, but, he, but here's the thing. Here's honestly the thing to me. <laughs> it's the problem with Chris Pratt in Jurassic World, which is, like, why, no, why hire a dude who can be funny to then not be funny in your movie? Yeah. Ryan Reynolds can be charming and funny. Like, before, but is he supposed to? Well, no, but that's the point. If you don't want him to be, hire someone else. Because he like it, give a fuck about this movie. Yeah. You really couldn't. You could tell he was having a bad But like you thought this was gonna save Canada when I ran But before this, everyone knew right. him from like Van Wilder or something. Like he's a funny yeah. dude and he's very tongue in cheek and he's a successful him. stiffler. Right? And then you put him in this and you're just like, but what if you weren't funny or charming? And they just gave him, like, slightly darker hair and said, like, but you've had sex with Blake Lively, so you're okay. Would you rather watch Green Lantern or Bulletproof Mark? 
Bulletproof Monk. Every day. I haven't seen Bulletproof Monk. Mm. Oh, God, it's adorable. I would rather watch Van Wilder. When the dog has sex with the, like a uh, like uh, like I a hate player, no, I hate no, this fucking no, movie. This is the worst. The he jerks off the dog into the Saint Clair to give it to the. Thank God you clarified that for No, absolutely. Funny story. I uh, that is a funny story. No, actually, real life funny story happened to me yesterday. I'm not wait, you ate dog semen yesterday? No, no. So I was uh, I was working a gig. I was a video gig at a bar in uh, Midtown. And some girl came up to me and was like, how'd you get your backpack in? And I'm like, what? And so we had this, uh, somehow the conversation turned into, when she lived in Houston, she knew a, a person that used to jerk off cat. Pause, I mean, what bar were you at? Um, Ender, it used to be right across the like, cup. Uh, you know where Front Page News used to be in the Yeah, town? yeah. It's like uh, two bars from there. All right, that makes, all right, that explains everything. Continue yeah. with your story. Oh, no, that's it. I have all the answers I need. Yeah. I think um, we're done here. And, uh, I, I Court's adjourned. Said, I just, it was like that meet the parent situation where he's like, oh, you know, you I know, have like, nipples. Can you jerk me off? Can you relax? Yeah. Wait, wait, I, I remember I went, on a, uh, I went on a coffee date with a girl that said she saw a cat's penis. I don't know where I'm going with this. Um, I don't know. We're going to let you go there. Yeah. And then I just stopped calling her afterwards because she wanted me to go to church and I was Muslim. Well, it's it's actually more coherent than this movie. Exactly. Did you know that he was naked most of the time? It was just CGI. CGI dots and stuff. Drink. Yeah. Um, and I think that was it. They just wanted to show off the body that is Ryan Reynolds. I just... Mm. It was 2011. There's a lot of people that could have chosen. Make him funny. Make him charming. This, The problem is everyone in this character doesn't care. Like, no one cares. It's, okay, it's I'll, I'll put it out there. Additionally... So this is 2011 when our comic book superhero movies are still very serious. Yes, that's true. So, because remember, think about the very first time you saw one of these comic book movies really start to venture into, like, being funny. Like, legit funny. Like, I think the first time I ever saw a movie and I was like, this is just too silly. And I was very upset about it was Thor Ragnarok. Now, that being said, it has grown on me. It's probably one of my favorite in the Marvel Cinematic Universe now. (laughs) But I remember at the time sitting in the theater just thinking this was blasphemy because I wanted a very, like... Shakespearean. Yeah, well, you know, comic books were very important to me, and it made me feel like they were shitting on what was important to me. Like, yeah. they like they didn't respect the material, which was not the case at all. I mean, it's, you know, you get what you get out of it, right? But sure. it was that was their take on it. And um, I felt that if you made something funny, you didn't, you weren't respecting whatever that item was. I can see and that. Yeah. so I think that in 2011, all of our comic movies are very serious. They're very dark. They're, they're trying to be gritty. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's a little levity to it by just inherently having Ryan, because they're like, oh, Ryan Reynolds is a nice, funny guy. That'll lighten the mood. Yeah. Um, but that's probably as far as we can go, you know, be- before becoming sacrilegious. Uh, but nowadays, you know, looking at him as Deadpool, they're, they don't even give him a screw. They're probably just like, hey, you know, here's some, here, just pick up some shit off the craft services table and go at it, Ryan. And, and you know, and that's how you do it because they've realized the formula works. Well, he writes that script. Yeah. yeah. Well, they were trying to get away from that Jonah Hex. Which was very dark, gritty. Well, well, I would say I, would I mean, I, I mean, if you want the uh, first comic book movie I can think of that had genuine laughs, uh, we did it way back in the day, The Mask. Well, but I will say that's I, I, a, that that falls into a different category of comics. Well, uh, but I, I will also say Howard the problem time. is, <laughs> brace yourself, nine eleven, because with nine eleven, everything is we've got to save the world. Because if we don't, the terrorists win. And it's oh, Nick, what the hell is 9 11? Well, but it's just so fucking. You don't know about 9 11? No, I can't God. say that I do. <laughs> it, it, some... He's got a YouTube video he can send you. <laughs> oh. But it just it ruined the Bond movies Bond. because the Bond can't make a joke. It ruined the Batman movies because mm. now Batman can't make a joke. And now Ryan Reynolds, a decade later, you can't even make fun of the fact that he's working for the military. Like, the military at the end has to be the hero, kind of. Yeah. Like, it's just, like... Yeah, it, it, I agree it, with that. And, and so, like, you can't have, like, when Hal Jordan or any of the Lanterns are, like, not really funny, like, Jon Stewart isn't funny, but it's the strong upper lip, like the British kind of, well, I've saved the day. There's no, there's nothing triumphant about it. It's like, we saved it by the skin of our teeth. 
There's no levity. There's no joy. We just barely survived another episode of the Green Lantern. And, you know, like, the, the, that's what makes this movie such a drag. It's, it's, it's hopeless. And then Peter Sarsgaard, cutting up an alien without Mulder and Scully, turns into nonsense. Yeah. He turns into Beavis from Beavis and Butthead. I don't yeah. get it. That never pays off. His villainy, villain art doesn't make sense. Well, it's in the comics. He's basically he gets he he's he's, he's infected by the same thing that causes uh, Gorilla Grodd and the Gorilla City to gain telepathic powers. Right. Really? Yeah. He has nothing to do with the Green Lanterns. He has nothing to do with Parallax. He has nothing to do with any of that nonsense. He is one of Green Lantern's greatest enemies. But luckily, him, Blake Lively, and Ryan Reynolds all went to high school together, or whatever that nonsense was. Yeah, that's some weird. I, I <laughs> don't even. Obsession, yeah, that obsession. I don't even know what to. God, this you, movie. It's fine. We're not going to talk about it. Anymore. We're fine. Now. We've been, um, well, I, I will I will summarize really quick. Do it, please. What try. they do is they decide to take parallax. And they make Parallax into a fear energy guardian. Yes. Whereas in the comics, Parallax was how Jordan infected with the fear energy. Right. Oh. Okay. I mean, this also, if you haven't seen it, is the second Green Lantern. Uh, um, a Fantastic Four movie. It looks like when uh, Galactus shows up and it's just yeah. a fart cloud. So I just said it was it's a fart cloud. cloud. It's CGR nonsense. Yeah. This is like CGI. But the, 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 the problem with this CGI nonsense is no, it's just, it doesn't add anything. To have Parallax be a person, at least as a person, mm-hmm. this is just kind of like mm-hmm. fangles. Well, it's it's just fangly clouds. Would you rather him fight a cloud or an opposite of the Green Lantern? I would rather because that goes into the superhero trope, like with the th- like with Marvel girls in third act. The third act, Iron Man will face uh, the Iron Mongol. Captain America will face Red Skull. The complete the, polar opposite of the characters. I would do it. Yeah, it the, would be the, simpler. The better story would have been. The better story would have been basically um, he shows up for training. Sinestro doesn't want him. He tries to take him down. The Guardian smacks Sinestro, and Sinestro is kicked out, and now Sinestro is the villain. Right. That would have made for an infinitely better movie. Or if Parallax was set up by Sinestro to cause chaos in the Guardians. Absolutely. He, he or if fear. Sinestro went looking for Parallax to create a fear, a fear ring because he thought that the Guardians were garbage. Or if there was a fake threat to do exactly what you said. I think the John Stewart story would better as a as a Green Lantern. Yeah, but this is 2011. They weren't going to put a black superhero on the screen. You're damn right. Well, we did steal, and that worked out great for everyone. <laughs> the Shaft? The Shaft? No. <laughs> um, well, Black let me tell you this. Right okay, one. so just because just this movie is all over the place, obviously now... And this podcast. And this podcast. Now there's a, kind of like a revival, I mean, minus Ezra Miller... Oh, that movie's never gonna come out. I wanted to come I, out. I want Michael Keaton Batman. I, I that's the thing. I just want to see Michael Keaton. Well, you lost the Batgirl too when he was in. Uh, see, I know. Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm mad you left out Blade, Blade when we were talking about badass black dudes. Seriously. It's Blade, motherfucker. Who would y'all want? What version of Green Lantern would you want now? And who would you want the actor? Here's honestly what I would do. Okay, I would start out with Hal Jordan. For who's your Hal Jordan? No, no, no. no. But just for the cold open. And do like oh. do it as like Channing Tatum or someone you know, someone young and hot and muscular. Him to be struck down and then do the Batman or sorry, uh, Spider Man into the Spider Verse and then ha- and then have Jon Stewart pick it up after him. Yeah. Because then yeah, I like that. you have someone to start the story, <clears throat> tell us all the cold open nonsense, him to die. Then we have another another lantern, which I know is not how Jon Stewart quite works, but it's a movie, so it doesn't matter. Well, Trident Tatum is very famous for being white. White, and also, like, I think G.I. Joe Retaliation, mm-hmm. they kill him. And he's very, he's on this come up thing where he makes cameos now. Channing Tatum is Ta- Channing Tatum. well known for being white. Yes. I love it. Uh, white uh, and muscular. Uh, I mean, and, and who's, I like him. Who, 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 who's, who's your Jon Stewart? Depends on how old you want to play him. Um, because, I, I mean, if you wanted him to be... Because 
John Stewart is also the kind of no nonsense like, you because you could do an older dude do an Idris Elba type. Yeah. Um, but that'd be dope. I mean, because I like him in charge. He plays a good like dominant yeah. guy. I mean, you could do it a little bit. Um, uh, Jimon Hansu. <laughs> you could do a Jimon, but he's not built the same way. I just imagine John Stewart with the big. It just like he's six foot five and he looks down on Who's uh, the guy his name is Lakeith Stanford? Yeah. He uh did uh Judas and the Black Messiah. Mm-hmm. The not not uh the, the Judas, not the uh, Yeah, the, I know the, you're right. Him or even uh shoot, I would like a Denzel. First of all, I would like Denzel in almost every role. I would I want oh, Denzel yeah, yeah, to say yeah. the Green Ranchers <laughs> So I'd like you to know that I typed into Google white muscular actors just to see what would pop up. Was Hugh Jackman in the top? Hugh Jackman's number one, followed by Sylvester Stallone, followed by Chris Hemsworth, (laughs) followed by Dwayne Johnson. Hemsworth versus Hemsworth. Followed by Jason Statham. Jason Statham. Followed by Arnold Schwarzenegger, and then my favorite, Terry Crews. (laughs) Why does he show up in white (laughs) and muscular? Interesting. <laughs> so that Terry is, Cruz and Henry like, Cavill. Henry Cavill's all that. Uh, Henry would Cavill would be good in that Terry movie Cruz now, but yeah. Too. Terry Crews as a Green Rancher. Yes, that's it. Terry, Terry might do it. Terry what might do it. What's the name of the uh, alien that uh, trains Hal on strengthening his uh, skill? The guy oh, the uh, Green Mile. Fishbuck. Tomare. Yeah, Tomare. Yeah. Fishman. Hal Fishman. I mean, that's Terry Crews right there. <laughs> Terry Crews. No, you're thinking of the dog. Oh, guy. you're thinking of Kilowog. Who was yes. played by no, Michael, Clark. Michael David. Clark? Michael Clark plays Kilowog. That was not Michael Clark. Oh, it yes, Michael it's Clark. Michael Clark. R.I.P. Michael Clark Duncan. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Keith David's still alive. You can do him. He's got that yeah. voice. I mean, if it's gonna be CGI nonsense, you might as well yeah. just do Maurice Lamarche. Like it doesn't matter. Well, here's the beauty about Green Lantern is that it's space cops. You don't even have to make it based yeah. in in the. On planet Earth, you can just send it anywhere. America. Well, yeah. Well, in recent years, actually, they they have a yet another new Green Lantern. He's Lebanese American. Wasn't there a uh, woman too? Uh, yeah, there is another. There's a woman as well. But he was controversial because he had stolen a car in a fit of desperation yeah. and was in jail when he became a Green Lantern. And he's like, well, there's problems out there, and I can help, so I'm just going to leave. Heroes didn't like that. But then he, like, saved the Earth, so, you know... Hmm. I don't know, maybe it's the fighter pilot of me, or the fact that they were talking about it, but just that everyday story. Tom Cruise doesn't make everything better, I promise Tom you. Cruise does make everything better. No, he does not. No. Like, this man... Look, no. you didn't have to... Look, you didn't have maybe to... Maybe girl... You did not live through the years that I lived through. That's true. Where they sprinkled Tom Cruise into everything. 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 And then he was jumping on Oprah's couch. Jumping on Oprah's couch and and just... And and just exhausting. Exhausting. Kidnapping Katie Holmes. I mean... Uh, You know about all this, right? No. Oh, my... Oh. Okay. All right. All right. So... Tom Cruise was married no to Katie Holmes. I remember that, that Oprah jumping and, Yeah, and so the, the deal is he essentially held this poor girl hostage in a very strange religious cult-esque way. And she uh, talks allegedly. about it. She talks about it later, about the fact that, you know, and, you know, that, yeah. This is about Scientology. Okay, all right. All right. Yeah, you know. But what if he wasn't a Scientologist? I admire the fact he goes from stunts. I, 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 I don't care respect. that he's a Scientologist. I care that he's fucking annoying. Okay. Yeah. Like, I could care. I mean, he could be Catholic, and I'd be like, damn, he's the most fucking annoying Catholic I've ever met. Like, and I really <laughs> give two sh- me. I know. I could give two shits that. about his religion, but I do care about the fact that he's a douchebag and the fact that he seems like an asshole. I got and he's really cocky. Much. And the fact that I think he often will throw out the fact that people don't like him, not because of all those reasons, but because of his religion. It's much like how when shitty movies that have women as leaders in the movie, they're like, it's because men hate women. And I'm like, no, it's because your movie sucked and you're boring. Congratulations, you have titties. So do I. 
Uh, you know, <laughs> everyone at this table has titties. Not I'm impressed, pretty. you know. Thank you. So I was going to say, I appreciate Daniel covering his ass by saying allegedly. As oh. a Scientologist, we're going to come after him. Oh, they're listening. I mean, <laughs> they are listening. They are fucking Trust listening. Trust me. <laughs> well, hold on. So it's, it's, it's Tom Cruise, the chick from uh, King of Queens, or I think she got out. Former, former, no, former, former. Liam Marini. Who, who else are the famous Scientologists? Uh, I know a lot of left. Oh, um, uh, what? <laughs> The Handmaid's uh, Tale actress. Oh, Wasn't the Madonna Elizabeth doing it for a while? No, Madonna's super Jewish. Yeah. Ah. Um, Will Smith almost was Kirk Scientologist. Forrest Whitaker? He was. Uh, was I, I, no, he wasn't Scientologist. He was just in Battlefield. He was in that bad movie. I mean, if everyone who was in Battlefield Earth is Scientology, we're in trouble. Beck? John Travolta. John Travolta. Beck? Beck was a Scientologist. He's yeah, but he was left. raised in Scientology. He doesn't like it anymore. That's why that, that use That doesn't mean he doesn't use Xenu to fight people. Mm-hmm. Happy Xenu Day a couple days ago, by the way, gentlemen. Oh, well, oh Xenu Day? Yeah, yeah it's the fourth what? day he came up with Xenu after coming out of a coke binge. Oh, God. That, Cancel us, Scientology, I dare you. That's, that South Park episode. Shut da, da, dum, 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 dum. Smart, 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 okay, smart. good. Go ahead. Sue me. So, oh, Green Lantern. <laughs> So Green Lantern, you can tell how bad this movie is because we really don't want to talk about it. I mean, like, at what point Peter Sarsgaard, who does the uh, alien autopsy, touches something <coughs> yellow and starts turning into a monster, which is nonsense. Uh, when he's, okay, Charlie, what's the name of that villain in real life? Hector Hammond. Yeah, but does he not have, like, a... No, he doesn't have a name. Yeah, okay. no, no, no. So, like, he starts looking almost like a Brainiac character, but we're not allowed to do Brainiac because Superman's not involved, I guess. Um, I mean, what was their intentions by adding Amanda Waller to this? Because she's only involved when you factor in, like, the members of the Suicide Squad. So, my thought on this is they wanted to do a DCU yep. ten years earlier, and, and she's the connective tissue. And, and if, if this movie had done well... They one they would have done the sequel because throughout this movie they're setting up the there, sequel. There's Everything. a post-credit scene yeah. too in this movie. Yeah. Was it a where he gets the ring. Yeah. yeah. Where he gets the ring. Yeah, exactly. And with Frodo and Sam. And it happened way too late. Anyway, right. yeah. that would have been great if it happened at the beginning of the movie and they the throw. Oh, 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 oh. Where he had the green ring and the yellow ring and he was playing like <laughs> again do the Frodo thing if you're gonna rip off nonsense do it just like. He's twitching as he's going towards being, because they don't even well, have the power. They, you know, it, it's it's either they're they're putting in little Easter eggs, Amanda Waller, you know, the yellow ring, or they're setting up something for the future. Um, Carol Ferris uh, with the code name Sapphire. Okay. 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 She she yeah, was no, that she was sense, yeah. she was a lavender um uh indigo <laughs> what is it lavender 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 lantern. lantern. So listen, lavender <laughs> lantern that's my favorite racehorse ever. DC <laughs> won a lot of money off that. Don't make movies. Don't make movies. Well, okay, I I understand now True. recently with the new merger with uh, with Discovery Plus, they actually are finding their own Kevin Feige. To at hold these. Okay, so I'm going to stop you there, Grandpa. What? They've been trying this for decades. Of course, but I'm just saying, just stick to the animated series. The animated series, the anima- the animation movie. Harley Quinn is the best. No, no. I'll, I'll roll it back even more. Stick with their television shows. Their television shows are brilliant. Yeah, no, that's the whole CW era. The CW stuff right? is okay, but have you seen Doom Patrol? Doom I love Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol's yeah, amazing. Go back to the 90s. Batman the Animated Series. Batman yes, Beyond. yes. Yep. Well, all the... All, you know, Nor, you're right. They do animation extremely well. And TV. And TV. Yeah. But animation is where they first showed. Absolutely. I mean, that and is... That's, and that's where they can beat Marvel. And Marvel tried to do animation, and they just <laughs> kept failing and failing and failing. But DC knocked it out of the park. Every time. Because, I mean, and, and it's also the different styles of books and stuff. And it's we darker. Get, well, but it's also that, like, if you read, like, DC by volume, it makes more sense than Marvel by volume. Marvel often boils itself down, and it says every now and again, like, Spider-Man is great, but Spider-Man Blue expands the first five years. Spider-Man Yellow, you know, um, uh, sorry, Daredevil Yellow or Hulk Gray, like... I love Marvel books, 
But if I'm going to read something episode by episode, issue by issue, it's going to be DC because that's how they yeah. do their stories the best. Yeah. And I get it. Batman 89 and Superman 77 did something that they didn't think was possible. But you had also directors that had a vision. Dick Donner and Tim Burton knew what they were doing. Well, no, they were building movies, not a cinematic universe. Yeah. And the problem is, is that ever since 2009, yeah. DC's been focusing yeah. all their movies into cinematic universe. In fact, actually, the successful movies since 2009 are the ones where they isolate them and make it clear these are yeah. not part of a cinematic I universe. Like Aquaman, the Aquaman, the Joker with the Walking Phoenix. I, I like Aquaman. The news yeah. Yeah. Aquaman was part of the shared yeah, universe. But it didn't care about it. it but was I, to, yeah, but the, to I'm talking like, well, no, that was Man Babies on Parade. I was not happy with that movie. Uh, um, the Todd Phillips one? The, yeah. Joker, yeah. <laughs> um, Thank you. Uh, but, uh, I've only seen it once. The, the, um, the most recent Batman movies. Oh, The Batman. The Batman. Yes. Um, if you go back to the Heath Ledger one... Um, uh, the Nolan Trilogy. The See, Nolan Trilogy, yes. This is why I like the new Suicide Squad movie, because they introduce all these characters that you expect are going to be the main characters, but just specifically not to tie them in kill off like what three quarters of the cast yeah know? exactly and to clarify because it's stupid but it's the suicide squad not suicide squad the will the will smith one was not good the one with oh, that was, was good no that was just the will smith one was will smith and and the john Robbie. cena one or whatever well That's did really you did you follow up follow that up with uh peacemaker it's a really good show Good show. Solid. Good show. Really solid. Stuff. I saw White Supremacy in different. And again, if you haven't seen it before, watch Harley Quinn the animated yeah. show. Oh my gosh! Yes. The first line, "Hello, my fellow whites." That's right. I was like, "Oh my god!" Well, because that's the other thing. If you put a Batman caricature on screen, we get it. We we learned that with the Lego Movie. You don't have to explain anything, and Harley Quinn yeah. doesn't bother for a second to explain anything. Well. Yeah, I won't spoil any of it if you, no one's caught up. I'm, I've caught up to it too in that show. They do, do a psychotic... The Harley does talk to you. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Watch season three. It ended six, four weeks ago, three weeks did, ago. Did it end? Well, the end of the season. No, the season ends. The season ends. Oh, real. Yeah. But, but next season will happen. There oh, will be a fourth it's season. It's the only thing HBO Max is going to renew. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're killing everything else. No. We're no. fine. Everyone's fine. Release fine. the bad girl. <laughs> they release the bad at this point. I mean, I, at least for Brendan Fraser's sake. You know, it's a tax dodge. It's going to be a tax dodge. We'll see. It Just, <laughs> they you can make more money with a flop than with a hit. <laughs> <laughs> they can give me both two, three, three bullshit fans to pass the four bullshit No, back girl. <laughs> And oh gosh! Four <laughs> bullshit Fantastic Four movies. One that was re released on the the internet. One was released on Hope. One was uh, two. Which one is the Robert Chris Corman? Adams. The and Corman, one, yeah. And then <laughs> the one Corman? with fucking Miles Taylor and, and Michael B. Jordan. No, oh, Michael B. Jordan. He deserves better. Miles Taylor deserves that, but yeah. no. Michael B. Jordan. Hey, you know what we're talking about? Green, Green Lantern. Lantern. Green Lantern. Um. Okay. Candace is not is dead. Uh, Charlie, I'm going to catch you up. Well, then you and I can talk about this. Uh, so after nonsense... How did I die? Am I just... I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Sorry. No, we're fine. No, no, everyone's fine. We're fine. We're, we're fine. fine. So after Big Headman turns into an asshole... Yes. We have a very tense cocktail party where we're announcing that Ferris is going to expand into the drone business. And it turns out that Big Headman is, um... Senators. Tim Robbins, like, son, and he's getting all twitchy after being kicked out of class for sweating on top of teenage girls. And he, what happens is, as Dad is flying away, uh, Big Headman uses his telepathy to crash the helicopter, but luckily Hal Jordan is there, and now the world knows that Green Lantern exists. Exactly. Well, and I think it's really interesting, Is like, you mentioned that they don't give him a chance to be comedic, but every time he fucking uses that ring, it is in the stupidest, most silly, most hot infantile wheels. way. Oh, hot tub. Constantly. <laughs> and, and, like, the problem is, like, when he's originally fighting and he's getting the, like, the shit kicked out of him, who could be bothered? 
but he decides then to be a big boy, he's gonna turn the helicopter's like body into the, the like a race car. And you're just not just a race car, a hot wheel. Because track. that That's track weird. was a hot wheel track. If you've ever done hot wheels, that was a hot wheel track. Oh, track his, his nephew had in his room when it was birthday. That's true. First of all, how do you not know that's how uh, how Jordan? People, just from the hair. Is it the hair? Is or, or just the fact that it's just a mask? It's, 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 well, I did appreciate that when he met up with Carol. She was like lively. She yeah, was like, yeah. she looked at him. She's like, how like, is that you? And he's like, what do you mean? No, it's not me. She's like, I have known you all my life. I can tell this cheap. They, they I've seen you those. naked. They deliver yeah, exactly. those lines at that volume and that because it's like, I have known you all of my life. Thanks, Blake Lively. Well, I mean, it's it's the whole club. Clark Kent put on the glasses. Which they reference. Yeah. She, yeah, which they reference. Um, I don't know. People will come with like, uh, I'm just obsessed with this movie. I'm sorry. You know what I'm upset with? What's that? I just sat here and I was researching. That's why I was quiet for a minute. Do you know that Peter Sar- Skarsgård isn't related to any of the other great Skarsgårds? No. No. They have the same, because I was like, obviously he must be one of those eight brothers, right? He's not related to them at all. He's like some random fucking Skarsgård from Illinois. So he's the Adam Baldwin to the Baldwin It's family. so sad. I mean, I was like, wait a minute. I was the like, Adam Baldwin to the Baldwin I was like, family? Because I was just thinking oh about, because I was just thinking about, you and I were talking about uh, Andor upstairs, which by the way, Skarsgård and Andor, hmm. Delicious. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, and Go so, on. and but I was just like, oh, I wonder how he fits in. He doesn't. He doesn't. He's he is the fucking yellow lantern of the scars guards. Like he doesn't belong, and You're he's not part person. of any of them. And it made me feel sad for him. And then I found out that he was apparently in a movie where Tim Robinson hired him for it, and I think that's how they ended up both in this film. But anyways, most importantly, unrelated scars guard. So you think there was like an awkward like, not Thanksgiving because he's Swedish, but like, your Thursday, like where Alexander almost invited him. He's like, is he a real scary scary? Exactly. I bet he sent him a herring. <laughs> have you seen Vince's last day? I have a herring for you. Right. My good cousin Peter. Exactly. And then Peter's like, what? This is, this is awkward. Alexander Skarsgård. Hot like, fucking Alexander Skarsgård is delicious. Because I was I like, because I looked at Peter. Because I looked at Peter and I was like, man, I was like, he doesn't look like the rest of them. It's because he's not. But what if we were in battleship together? Because it's really, <laughs> it's getting cold around the Peter Skarsgård's house. And I would love to give Christmas presents to my family. <laughs> and by being in battleship, you know. I love that movie. Well, how much money? Did you fucking make fun of that movie. How much money? money Yes, yes, it's fucking amazing. Michael Bay. Yes, it's fabulous. And so, yes, I love it. What about the board game? Yeah. That makes. Yeah. The other one. Okay. Yeah, the one where in the middle of it, where they, they the realize they can't use electronic ships, so they got to use the old ship, and all where, the old sailors are there, the and I cry, game? and I cry when all the old sailors help out. Where is Sergei Eisenstein's battleship? <laughs> <Dallas shit. laughs> <laughs> where is the parallels? I don't know. This beloved <laughs> board game is one of those in the Rihanna-based film. So in the Ugh, late part of the film, when they can no longer use electronics and they're yeah. trying to figure out where they are in the game, they, they, they use it. the exact system that you use yeah. for when you play the game. It's the gridded system. C-12. And it is amazing. Really it's the best fucking movie. I love that movie. Through a clinched jaw, he goes, C-7. Oh, and he's playing oh, bingo with that. grandma. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, Christ on a cracker. Or Christ on a cracker. Um, so the last bit of this turns out to be a fight scene between nonsense and nonsense. CGI! Boop, 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 So at, around this point we find out that the Guardians created Parallax because they, in an effort to figure out what they could control, Will was so popular, they were like, what if we did the other thing? Um, and they just wanted power. They were greedy men and they wanted power. Also, yes. I mean, I will say, the problem is... Again, I wish this humor was 20% stronger. Okay. Because, like, 
I'm a man with children, and that messes with everything. I mean, but I was rewatching. My daughter loves uh, the Jurassic World movies, so we were watching uh, the Oof. Guardians movies because they also have Chris Pratt, and she's convinced the same character. The second Guardians That's movie so makes me. The second Guardians movie makes me cry like a child. <clears throat> Michael Rooker yeah. and all that. Oh, yeah. But the the Stan Lee cameo, he's meeting with Marvel's version of the Guardians, right? It's the lo- the tall dude or the dudes standing up with the robes. And he's like, so geez, I was a, at one point I was a mailman, and he's just going through everything, and then they walk off because that movie can tell a joke. It's not great, but it can tell a joke. This movie, we're just staring at CGI nonsense. CGI? And on the CGI nonsense, unblinking, they just go, proceed. And you're just like, the movie can proceed without you asshole. And so at this point, one of them finally speaks up and goes, you know, we're the problem here, and the whole movie is because we fucked up. Sorry, guys. That took two hours or whatever. Exactly. It wasn't that the, 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 the artists changed their minds. It was the United States of America. That's right. America. Well, that's what you had to do back in the day. So. And, one, and one of the Guardians turns into Parallax because he's obsessed with fear. And the obsession with fear makes him get all this power, turns him into a wall from Doom 3. And what they, they're literally doing, which we're not explained how it works or what happens to anything, he makes people scared. And when they become scared, he sucks the fear out of them he and they eats vaporize. their souls. I mean, yeah. The biological Mythbuster cloud comes to me straight up. Yeah. I'm going to be scared. Right. It's, it's, it's kind of a cheat. Yeah. Um, but then the whole thing, the rest of it is we have to fight the, the fear cloud. And unfortunately, this human is not powerful enough. Um, I was looking for the Care Bears to pull up. You know what I mean? The shoot love. Based on how they describe Hal Jordan, the Care Bears would have had a better shot against this asshole. Fair. Like, to be fair, I yeah. offer the Care Bear Stare. I don't want to watch Care Bear. I know about that Care Bear Stare. Care Bear Stare. I, I, I do too. I not that we were all the same unison, but. No, I'm still thinking about that Scars Guard that's all left out. Um, I mean, I'd be mad if my last name was Skarsgård and I wasn't related to them. I'm the loneliest Skarsgård. The loneliest Skarsgård. It's the Christmas special you didn't know you needed. Directed by uh, Sophia Coppola. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, what else does she have going on these days? So she did that Bill Murray Christmas. She can pull off a Scars, a Skarsgård kind of Christmas. Oh, no doubt she can. I'm just wondering if that what she pictured herself doing at this point in her career. No, she was just gonna work on her father's vineyard to get shot up like, uh, I forget who kills her in that movie. She's in Godfather 3. Mm-hmm. Um, that was her origin story. Mm-hmm. One of the very good ones. <laughs> um, so at the end of this, it turns out that Forehead was just a Parallax's, uh, you know, drone? I don't know how to call it. Uh, proxy on Earth? To bring up Avatar. <laughs> Avatar. There you go. That's Stay a great. Tuned. That's a great one. Mm-hmm. Stay tuned for Avatar. Um, Dazzle the Wolves, Pocahontas. What? 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 <laughs> that's a deep cut. Wow. I don't hate that first Avatar movie, but I can't remember it because it's been seventy-five years since it came out. That's because it, it's it's horrible. The Dances with Wolves, on the other hand, that's a good movie. That soundtrack, it slaps. Dances with Wolves has. Such a good soundtrack. It's just as good as Bless Mohicans. Oh, I mean, the Last like, of Mohicans is my my personal go to. Oh my god, we, we, we that's such a good this, soundtrack. We were discussing this before. Yeah, and I was humming it here a little bit. Yeah, uh, Kids from a Rose. Uh, Kids from a Rose. <laughs> <laughs> you know what doesn't have good music? What? Green Lantern. Oh shit! No, like Who wrapped in the music for Green Lantern? I, I bet it was. I bet it wasn't a Scars Guard. I'll tell you that. You know, wasn't <laughs> better than Scars Guard. <laughs> um, <laughs> hashtag <laughs> Illinois Scars Guard. <laughs> <laughs> of the um, Scars Guard of the Illinois Scars Guards, thank you. Yeah, I want to know who did the music. James uh, Howard. Oh, no. Daniel, how many times have you had to edit this Uh Quite a number. <laughs> enough. <laughs> enough times. Mostly for copyright issues. Uh, is that so? oh. I sang uh, you, You'll Be Back fully. And Daniel's like, God damn, I can't use this. Yeah. What did, what did, 
Are you watching the Barney? Yeah. No, I was, I was uh, playing with IMDb and it said to play music. Uh, anyway, so the end of this movie is like the fart cloud comes to Earth. <laughs> Stop. There, talking to you, Chase. And, um... He wants to eat the Earth so he can go have enough power to go eat the Guardians on mm-hmm. Oa. <laughs> Well, and in All case... he wants to do is eat the Earth. He's not unreasonable. I mean, no one's going to eat Earth's eyes. Oh, my God. I will also doing. say, in case you didn't realize that Hammond was also a villain, he, like, tries to sexually, like... Oh, yeah. Assault. And that like, made Carol, me... Pa- uh, Paris, or... Well, that Pop- I have him. newspaper clippings of you in my uh, apartment of your... Oh, All, I, All I know is that I, for one... Was a sad panda after I saw that scene. Mm. Charlie looks like he wants to kill me right now. Also, we I'm with... just debating if you're dead to me. That's right. What? what? You don't like sexual? You you say how to sexual harassment panda? <laughs> we also established around here. Well, we established early on. That's not how sexual harassment panda talks. Everyone knows that. Well, no, that was Mr. Mackey. Mm. You all say hi to sexual harassment panda. And, and then they gotta play the song. It's sexual oh. harassment panda. Oh. Is that copyright or is that? We're yeah, trash. We're fine. They're like, it's so awful. It's not recognizable. We should be fine. We'll fly under the radar. Mm-hmm. So. Maybe a parody of Kiss from a Rose. Um, so. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> so, hard so, to so, how about no, those scars guess, guards? I guess, I guess, yeah, I guess yeah. we I mean, you wrapped it up. I mean, basically, he throws the evil fart cloud, fart cloud into the sun, yeah. and it burns up. By the way, it's not our sun, uh, which is not explained very well. But we learned very early on when Kilowog is trying to, like, I put a sun here. What are you going to do about it? And he puts, like, a stake with his greenness. Um, and so he's like, well, what about... Is it, Carol? like, two suns, like, like Tatooine, or...? The only thing... The only good directing shot that George Lucas ever did. We have two suns, the setting, and he wants to go to Tashi Station. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, how is his consciousness? He's saved by everyone, and... Then well, we Sinestro have... saves him after he... Uh, throws parallax in the sun. And he gets the planet because Earth people deserve applause. And then at the end, they have like a night together, and then Hal flies off to save the universe. Amanda Waller, hold on. Is she the only one? The yes. only main character, possibly. Yeah, one of the people. I'm that... certain they had background black actors. Yeah. Well, no, you black had. Um, it was you like had... the second half, uh, a second. No, like, we had. Um, where what's... There was no white people in New York, and all of a sudden there were black people well, in New York. You had, you had Michael Clark. Yeah, yeah but he voiced no one. He, he was Kilowog. Well, right, but like he's CGI nonsense. Like on screen, everything is CGI nonsense. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. CGI, CGI. Exactly. CGI. I I ran out of drink a long time ago. Yeah, and you know and Tamara yeah, Morrison and, and you know Kentucky yeah, Waukee, they're they're, they're not it? technically white. No, he's uh, New Zealand. He's uh, yeah. Aussie, no, New Zealand. Aussie? Yeah. Yeah. He's he's a, he's he's a, a, he's, he's he's an a, Aboriginal. Aboriginal. And, and is American. I don't like his American accent. I'm not a big fan. Speech with you who you are. Who are? You can have a New Zealander. Crikey. Is that New Zealand? No. no. It's That's about Australia. No. No. He's from New Zealand. He's, <laughs> he's a decent director, but he's very funny. I just, I just like, the only, my impression of him is just Cord. Because, hey, my name is Cord. I'm the rocks. <laughs> That's it. That's all I can do. <laughs> yep. And uh, sometimes uh, I'm going against Scissor. Oh, there's a rock, paper, scissor joke for you. Nice. <laughs> If you have not seen what we do in the shadows, the movie, okay. he's in the movie. And it's great. I, I it is great. It. I can't right. find the movie. It's the show. It's harder to find. Uh, yeah. He's in the show, but rarely. He's like, rarely. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was the in Vampire the, Council. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Vampire Council. That was uh, the council's the, hilarious. The show that he did. Uh, the the new pirate one the pirate one yeah, yeah. Uh, our flag seen? means death have y'all seen it yes yeah, yeah. I, I haven't I, I haven't it. watched it but I, I do know all about it because all of my friends are obviously say, like obsessed with it, it so. of course it starts out of slow gay pirates gay pirates and it's very good see that was a twist for me even though my girlfriend was like you didn't see them like flirting I'm like nah I was just surprised when they started making I was in it the 
I was in it for. And Pirates. you were what? <laughs> disappointed? No, I love it. But you movie. know, they're not the first gay pirate show, though. Um, oh, black black oh, sails. Black sails. Black sails was, was amazing, and you so didn't see that shit coming you did out of nowhere. Not. No, no one literally. Bitch, that literally show was no amazing. It was that show was freaking amazing. Yeah, black sails was fantastic. I'm just saying it was not. It was it didn't a, make a cultural splash. It's a pirate show. That's fair. And it was done by AMC or History Channel or one of those. No, 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 no. Who was like done stars, by? Stars, right? Black stars. Sails. Oh, okay. stars. That makes sense. The Production home value is high. It's good. And there's a lot of ass shots. It's a great... It's sort of like... Uh, Period-esque oh, oh, oh. drama. I, I put drama. it into the category of let's make a, a, a show for women and gay men. Um, Spartacus falls into this one. Yeah. If you saw that one. Ooh. Um, and, of course, Black Sails is a good example. Um, I would even say Deadwood. Deadwood, yeah. I liked Deadwood a lot, yeah. too. That was a good one. So. But, uh, but yeah, so... Lots of um, yeah, it's 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 good. It's real good. So Green Lantern, uh, Green Lantern, hey. hey, space pirates. We're done. I think he stopped recording hours ago. No, no. Oh, we're good. <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, uh, it turns out that he gets the girl who saves the day. All the Green Lanterns, all the other lanterns cheer for him. Yeah. Then after 15 minutes of credits. We see Sinestro, like, centrally put on another ring. He turns yellow, and we're just like... <laughs> oh, no, a mid But a they, didn't even, they didn't even set up why he did that. It was just yeah. completely random. The movie we wanted the whole time shows up 70 seconds before <laughs> the end of the credits. Exactly. It's... Oh. Makes no sense. All right, so going around the table, uh, other than... I know nor- normally Nick goes around the table and asks what you think about it. I'd like to go around the table and ask, what colored lantern would you be, and what does your color represent, regardless of what the movie calls it? <gasps> okay. I'll allow it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want to start? Me? Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I'm going to go classic with the comics. Okay. Okay. All right. And I would actually, because I'm cheesy as fuck, yeah. I would do... The Blue Lantern, which is hope. Oh, rebellions are built on that. Mm, I indeed, love that. <laughs> indeed. Hey, Nora, what do you what, what would I you would mean? Be a multicolored lantern oh. called like uh, who's that dude from the Bible that had the jacket? Jesus. Joseph. Joseph. Oh. <laughs> One of those J's. <laughs> I would have a Joseph Esca uh, okay. jacket to uh, reminisce on medicinal purposes. Well, okay. they did multicolored lanterns. They called them the white lanterns. <clears throat> Why they gotta be white? Interesting. I would be the black lantern. <laughs> the colored lantern thing. Just because it's cool as shit. <laughs> and it would represent oppression. Or yeah. the black lanterns, the zombies. Well, they represent death, but you know, I like your idea better. The white lanterns, I feel like, were they like angels? They represented life in. Be, okay. They let they represented life and goodness, and the black le- lanterns represented death and darkness and evil. I'd be white. For contrast. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For contrast. Love that. Love that. Yeah. All right, Daniel, yeah. what lantern are you? Ooh. I guess I gotta go with red, which would be the color of like passion. Okay. Ooh, or... a passionate lantern. Well, in the comics, it's rage. rage. Oh well, that's passion. And the best, and the best Red Lantern is a cat, <laughs> like a kitty cat. Oh. It's like the best ever. Um, they actually showed the origin story of the kitty cat before he gets the Red Lantern and why he is pretty much enraged. And it's basically because you know, people threw him in a bag, dumped him in a river. Oh. It was a, it was a uh, Earth cat, wow. and literally it became a rage monster. Wow, that that is a comic book that would sell so well today. Right. Okay. There's actually a PlayStation Five game called Cat. Cat. Yeah. Amazing. Have you played it? I just know what you're talking about. Like walk around like a cat. I have a daughter who loves dinosaurs, so we're playing a lot of Jurassic World right now. Girl. Uh, what would you be, uh, Lantern wise, Nick? Okay, I'm gonna do the Charlie thing, and I'm okay. trying to remember what shit is. Um, I believe Indigo's compassion, and that's the one. Uh, yes. Uh, Although the problem is knowing compassion and how these things go, I would end up as one of the the, the black lantern, which is the dead ones. Yeah. <laughs> the, the power of death. What's the uh, power of the clear lantern? 
A clear lantern? Translucent lantern? <laughs> Translucent lantern? I like Nick's response. Mild indifference. Mild indifference. I, I, I think it's like an ultraviolet one too, which is like emotional. Or oh, something. yeah. There's a, well, yeah, there's a violet lantern. Violet lantern is love, but then there's ultraviolet, and I don't even remember what that is. No. It's cheat codes. It really is. See, I thought like I was Got gonna it. see. I was gonna say indigo is my color, and I was gonna be like, because I'm lesbian lantern. But like, apparently, it means something else. I can't be that. No, no. All right, so, so let's it's see what. Be like both purple and red, so it's the bisexual lighting. Yes. It's the bi- <laughs> the the lantern. That pan lantern. Pan lantern. Plantern. <laughs> That's me. Plantern. Instead of a ring, it's a flute. Yeah. <laughs> You're playing a pipe. Non-binary. That's right. Let's see. Give a ring on both hands. Non binary. <laughs> non binary butt plug of power. So, no one's recommending this movie? Fuck no. Fuck no. I, no, I, this I, is. I can't. I can't. No. Why? I mean, do you hate our viewers? Why would you ever recommend this to them? It's better than its reputation. You know no, it's not. No, it's not, Daniel. This is, this don't, is, don't be nice. This is what you should do turn on the movie, put it on mute, watch the, uh, listen to this podcast while. Wow. Watching a movie. Oh, oh you're gonna also see all the shit CGI, which CGI. CGI. This movie. Yeah. No, no, no. It looks. So it's bad. gratuitous. Why would you put CGI into a mask and a costume? Just actually wear a mask and a costume. I don't. You know what? All this yeah, stuff doesn't even. Technology. All this stuff doesn't even make you mad. The flashback of, of, of the kid. The kid's flashback, where it's like in this weird black and white. Like when you used to have those old video cameras and you could hit that button that would like make shit turn the opposite way, oh, like a yeah. negative. Hey, That's dude, what it looks like, and it makes me want to die. I mean, so, it's just the fucking Paul, worst. It's like every Family Guy episode I've ever hated rolled into one. So whenever Paul Rudd is on Conan, he does the clip from Mac and, <laughs> Mac and Me. Sure. If I if I was Ryan Reynolds, whenever I was on a talk show, that would be the clip, <laughs> right? The clip is just it's just the kid going, "Oh no, my dad!" And the thing exploded, and him <gasps> flying backwards. <gasps> And he, he waves to his kid right before it explodes. That was unnecessary. It <laughs> is. And then they talk about his dad. First of all, it, it, it blew up right as takeoff. I the the, the pre-check of that uh, flight, uh, whatever. It just just don't fucking. If if you if, if you if your dad worked for a company whose plane exploded on the landing strip. You're working for another company. And yeah, I, you would not work for that company. And I, I love how they keep reminding him, like, you're the spinning image of your dad. I still have trauma. It's and, like if Augustus Gloop went to work for Willy Wonka. And, like, his kid is just like, my father was dead here. Life was a work here. And I don't think enough happens in this city, because as soon as something happens, like the, like, uh, the test pilot to the drones family, they cover it on the news as soon as it happens. Same thing with the cocktail covering on the news. What the fuck? Don't watch yeah, this movie. They Don't said, watch this movie. at one point, Ibn Sora says, if you look up in the sky and see the plant, the stars in the sky, we rep- you will represent in your sector another thousand times as many stars. And everything happens on Earth. It doesn't, it doesn't. This isn't Batman or the Ninja Turtles where everything is ground level in Gotham City. It's supposed to be the galaxy. Like, it's, I mean, I don't care. For Listen, the it's it's just like lazy Star Wars. Whenever I, it's like, look, we're in a galaxy far away. And everyone's a fucking human. And they're all a Jedi. And they're all somehow part of the Skywalker family. And they're all white. And then I die. Or, I mean, or Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel is like, I have to take care of the universe. But first, Earth for two hours. And you're just like... <sighs> Which I respect that line from Endgame was like, yeah, I'm not the only motherfuckers out here. Yeah, right, right. That's what we need. Oh, God, fuck it. I'm sorry, this movie broke me. It was the most frustrating thing. And it's not that I don't like bad movies. We do. We have this one has no soul. This movie has no... It literally took our soul like a yellow yeah. lantern. It was bad. Yeah, I mean, it, it can't even, like, win as a camp movie. No. No, it's just, I it's thought just I would, bad. I, I thought I'd be making fun of this movie, but it just ended up pissing me. Well, yeah, but, it really did. But the thing about it for me is, if a bad, if, if this was, I mean, nowadays these things don't really exist. Trauma's not the same. But like, if this was a like a canon film, like Superman Four, at least there's hope. There's there, yeah. they they want to make a movie. This feels like no one gave a shit, and that's the worst sin you can do for something. That is true. It's the feeling that they had to make a movie in order to keep the property. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, which is the ultimate sin. Like you know that, what I mean? That, that terrible, uh, you brought up that terrible fast to four. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when you're like, you're like, we got to make the film in order well, to keep this property. So just make it. It doesn't really matter if it's good or not. It's just got to keep, keep the uh, the licensing. And you're like, wow. Well, at least at the end of Deadpool Sam. 2, you see Ryan Reynolds. <clears throat> well, Deadpool, really. Wade Wilson. Kill Ryan Reynolds after he goes back in the time hop and he was like, he, like he had this script, he was like, and then he's like, "This is gonna be the greatest movie ever," and he like shoots him in the head. That's right. And Deadpool's like, "You're welcome, Canada." Well, and also I guess R.I.P. Michelle Nichols, who's in those first two. Oh, she's boy. not coming back. Oh. Right. I forgot it. What? Why? This was bad enough. Why do you have to like make it worse? Because we're out of time. So thanks everyone for listening, tuning in, showing up. And by the by, this heart rending. <laughs> Dad, no! Uh, um, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Next week we're going back to our werewolf month. Oh, thank God. That's right. We we did American Werewolf last week. Next week we're doing oh. one of my favorite werewolf movies, one of the first movies that Larry introduced me to that I really liked. Uh, it didn't have rape, but that was okay. Uh, we're doing the Howling. Ooh, the Howling. Ooh, the howling. Solid. Ooh. And just because I love teasing. Yeah. Um, after we leave oh, October, obviously. after the howling, he said teasing me. Oh we're yeah, here. he met you. Uh, we're doing. We're, we're we're returning to one of my favorite genres, <gasps> the Sherlock Holmes genre. Oh, we, we're doing uh, first the Great Mouse Detective, followed by uh, the first R D J and Jude Law, Sherlock Holmes. Mm, so thanks yummy. for everyone who's tuned in, re- recommended us, reviewed us. The hundreds and thousands of you around the world who listen every week. Thanks, guys. And we're leaving. Bye. 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 Season 9 of Myopia Movies is produced by Nick Hoffman and Daniel Suttis. It is hosted by Nick Hoffman and stars Daniel Suttis and Matt Quinn. The theme music is Surf Shimmy by Kevin McLeod of Incomtech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 license. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and review us wherever podcasts are found. Thanks, guys.